Peter, first of all, congratulations on the show. It is amazing. I am here for the crime story, but I am staying for the family drama. Amazing, amazing show. Now, I got to ask you, where did this idea all come from for Ken? I, I suppose the idea came from, I was very lucky. I was given, like, I was developing with, with Braun Studios and the exec I was dealing with kind of gave me a blank check to write whatever I wanted. Like, it, there was, you know, go write to show you when to write was his exact words. And I, and I was interested in family dramas. I love family dramas. Like, I love Succession. I like Brown, Peaky Blinders. I think it's just a brilliant kind of, you know, setting for drama. And I'd been doing research on gangland in Ireland. And what really struck me about it when I began to dig into it in the lives of the, the real figures. We treat them over here a bit like reality stars where they're in the papers, they have nicknames, their Insta posts are up in, the, in, in, in a newspaper, like if they're on holidays, all this kind of stuff. So we know them and we know lots of them. But what really struck me when you began to dig into it was behind this kind of glossy, glamorous, wealthy life, there was just so much trauma. There was like, you'd read about a guy and his brother would have been killed or if someone else would have had an overdose and his father was in jail. And you just felt like, yeah, I know it looks great, but my God, their lives are so traumatic. And I thought like the combination of the family and the potential of the glamour and the trauma really kind of drew me into it more and than anything else. Absolutely. And we see that almost right off the bat when uh, the prodigal son, Michael, kind of returns home. It's kind of like a downward spiral after that. Um, and I do want to talk about Michael uh, for a second here because Charlie Cox is amazing as Michael. And uh, can, I just wanted to know, he can you talk to me about Charlie Cox and the balance he brings to the character with Michael's dark side and his vulnerability? Yeah, look, look it's a really, really difficult part. And often, like, like often in shows, the showy part, the person with the, the big scenes and the, the lots of dialogue and all that gets all the attention. What Michael has is so little to work with and he makes so much out of it. It's just incredible because Michael is a really internal character. He's an interior character and he exists in scenes but says very little. And like every time you're with Charlie playing Michael, you just care about this guy. And it was really funny, like from very early on, people would be looking at things and they'd be saying like, you know, he was the one they cared about most, even though he's the guy who's got out of prison, who does the shooting, who does all this thing. He was the one people felt for. And I think right. it is vulnerability. I think what, what Michael brings, or what Charlie brings to Michael, is just vulnerability. You feel for this man. He feels, regardless of everything he's done, he feels vulnerable and he feels emotional. And I think people can relate to that. Like, you know, where other characters are a bit more kind of like swagger and brash, it's like he just brings a different energy to the whole family. And, and, and I think that's that's really interesting. And, and it's amazing. And in, right. and with a different cast member playing Michael, he, I don't think he would have worked nearly as well. Like Charlie is incredible. Really yeah, we, we, we get glimpses of Michael's past. Um, but we I, I mean, it seems like prison has really humbled the character of Michael in a lot of ways. And speaking of family, um, I want to talk about Michael and Jimmy's relationship because that's a that's a brother relationship that we get to see explored throughout the course of the series. Um, the one thing I want to talk about with the two of them, there's a great line uh, that Jimmy says to Michael, something along the lines of uh, you've killed for money, but you won't kill for family. Can you talk to me about how Jimmy and Michael's relationship is explored throughout the course of the series? Yeah, it, it's a really interesting thing because the the, the things that have happened would it was a really fine balance because what you don't want to do is people think that Jimmy's a mug, right. that Jimmy's putting up with this. And, you know, and what we kind of said was between the three of them, between Amanda, Jimmy and Michael is like the other two in, the, in, in each of those triangles, the other two are the people they love most in the world, bar children. But like, you know, Michael, besides his, his daughter, the two people he loves most, are Amanda and, and, and Jimmy. And it's the same for Jimmy and it's the same for Amanda. These are the people. And that makes it feel real. Like it feels like they're, they're always conflicted. Right. And I kind of felt as well, we spoke about backstory and backstory can be, can be kind of like boring in a way when it's not on the screen, but we kind of like their backstory is their mother had abandoned them. Like their mother. So they, they grew up under a very abusive father 
and there's two boys who have almost that kind of thing, you know, you, where you go through war together or you go through trauma together. Jimmy is the older one who's looked after the younger brother. And they just have bonds from childhood. They just have bonds that cannot be broken. And as much as they hurt each other or as much, they still love each other more than anything. And, and I think the, the two performers really bring that. Like, you don't feel Jimmy's a mug or, or Patsy. You feel you feel his vulnerability, but, but you feel he loves Michael and you feel Michael loves him. And there's just a lot of kind of, I think, really, really kind of complex emotions in, in, in that relationship. I couldn't agree with you more. And especially the two, that their chemistry is off the charts. It really does feel like a genuine brother relationship. Now, look, look, tomorrow is episode four. And I, I mean, I've seen it, but I can't wait to see it again. Um, if we can tease it a little bit, can you tease a little bit about Claire's plan for Cunningham to keep him on his heels a little bit? Well, I suppose... The first three episodes almost feel like the first chapter. They yeah. bring us to the till the war begins. And we come back to episode four a, a couple of weeks later, and there's a new normal. Their lives have changed completely, and they're living under siege. And basically what Eamon is doing is he's picking off people he can pick off, killing associates and that, and squeezing their business and trying to lure them out. And what I really liked about Amanda, in a, in a way, as a character is, the rest of them have grown up in this world. They know the rules of, of gangland. They're, and, and, and knowing the rules can sometimes be limiting because you don't have, you know, where she comes in with a fresh perspective. So she's kind of going like they're sitting back under siege. She's the one who goes, we got to be smarter than him. We got to do this. And she takes the battle to him. And again, it's a kind of a, it's a kind of a foolhardy thing to do is like the killing. It's just like poking the bear again and you're going to get a bigger response. But, but she thinks different than the others. And that's what gives them an edge, I think. And when you have someone with a fresh perspective on a world and Amanda really brings up, it also is the beginning of her growth. Like up till here, we've seen a mother yes. grieving and this is her beginning to grow. In, because in the first episode, you never see her at family meetings. You never just see her to be part of the discussion on business. And suddenly you see that changing. And you can see her growing before your eyes. Right. And, and, and Claire's performance is brilliant. Like you just see it. There's a scene where she's sitting on a couch in birdies and they're having a conversation. And as decisions are being made, you, yes. they go in on her face at the end. And it's like, she's born. Now, now this is her as a, you know, as a criminal. And she's yeah. like a different person than the beginning. I couldn't agree with you more. Watching the character, like you, you said it literally the best, that you watch the character Amanda evolve before your eyes. And it's so fascinating seeing that character that's not tied to the crime world kind of uh, get the mindset and, and almost strategize uh, and sees things from a different angle. I, I love that. And, and you're right. Claire's performance is out of this world. Same thing with Emmett. Emmett always, every single time Emmett's on the screen, you really feel that his emotion come across. He, he's quite incredible. But like, I have a, another question for you because all of the uh, actors I'd interviewed uh, about Ken uh, speak of you very highly and, and uh, talk about you in such a reverent way about, about your writing. Um, and you and you have uh, such solid ideas for Ken. Uh, do you have? Do you see Ken going uh, multiple seasons? Do you have stories lined up for multiple seasons? Yeah, well, I do. Like, and as I said, we don't know if there's going to be multiple seasons, so it, I, I don't want to be too presumptive. Sure. But like, yeah, I have, and we're, I've already started working on season two in the hope that like we will get a second season. And I, I certainly have ideas for three seasons. That's that's that was the starting point. But I also like that season one almost feels complete on its own. So yeah. if, if there isn't, it, it, it could also live in a world on its own and feel like a story in its own. But yes, I do. And I, I think I think and I hope when you get to the end of the show, people will feel I want to know what happens next to these people. Right. And, that, and that's the thing. And I, and I hope that's how people will feel, because that's the idea is that we get to an end. A lot. Some things are resolved. A lot of things aren't resolved. A lot of things are set up and, and left open for more story and more dynamics within this family. And hopefully by then people will be really invested and we'll get the chance to do it all over again. Like, the last question I have for you, this is more from a, a Kin fanboy perspective, because I got hooked on the show immediately. I've seen it all through twice now, and I'm watching wow. it as it's airing uh, live. So uh, as a fanboy question, um, you had said that sometimes it's not as interesting, uh, you know, uh, not seeing the backstory on the page. But something I absolutely do find or I do want to see is Michael and Jimmy's childhood with their father. Is that something we can get explored uh, in, in the future, possibly somewhere yeah, I'm, down the line? I am hoping, like we've introduced Jimmy's father, right? And 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 hopefully, if 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 we get to do it again, there's a chance that he will be in the show much more. 
and he will have a greater presence in the show and it'll, it will allow us to explore his relationship with his boys and why his boys are the way they are. The how, like why these men have turned out the way they are because of this, this kind of like psychopathic bully was their father and their mother had left. And it's like growing up on, in that kind of, that kind of house is very, very difficult. And the effect that has on everybody in the family from Frank and Bertie to everybody, you know? So that's, that's, that would be my hope. If we, if we get the chance to do it again, we, we'd make him much more central. And that would allow us to explore lots of, lots of the stuff that's gone on in this family. Well, look, Peter, I am, uh, I am optimistically anticipating that season two, and hopefully we can be doing this again next season. Hopefully. I'd love to see those. I love to see all these relationships explored uh, because the show is brilliant. Like I said, I'm here for the crime, um, for, for the crime stuff, but I'm staying for the family drama. It's a really, really good show. Thank you so much for your time, Peter. Amazing. 